Hello, this is Alex from Cables.gl, and here we are, June 2022 Cables.gl update. It is giant, and there's a lot of uh, under-the-hood things, little optimizations, the website is faster, all the good stuff, but then there's just giant features that are, are kind of like in their own universes, right? We got this uh, augmented reality stuff, we got some physics things, um, rework of the entire image composing, the texture composing um, stuff and all the operators with that. So it's. I think uh, we're going to talk about it for quite a while. But in this video, I just want to talk about this um, kind of new way of making patches even or like a new style or a, a whole new world, I guess, is the physics update. We're uh, rewriting slowly, but uh, surely making this physics a lot better inside uh, cables and introducing with this release, we are doing things like colliding between the camera and the character that you're controlling inside the world or the virtual world. We have very precise ray casting um, that allows you to make 3D navigation and things like that. So in this video, we're just going to look at this room that's also the kind of hero image for this blog post and then one of the first or actually the first section in the blog post where we talk about what we've done and uh, uh, what it all is about and then there's this room patch so we're going to look at this room patch um, but before I'm going to do that is um, I want to point your attention to this little section, when you are on the cables.gl website, when you go to create, we have these templates, right? And now we have a new template, which is for this um, bare bones room with some cool stuff in it already, but it's, um, it's not as advanced as, uh, well, I mean, it's not really that advanced, but it's not as populated. Or, uh, <laughs> it didn't have an art curator go through the space and put in uh, a bunch of little interactive and, and uh, graphical visual things in there. Um, so, okay, so this is the room and this is the template. And I'm just going to look at the template really quick with you and uh, then we're going to move on and look at some other stuff. So you'll find this template, you can clone it and you, you're going to get exactly this. So um, what do you get? You get this greeting screen which is a div element, so you can do all the CSS styling, put in um, fonts and things like that, color it, um, and then we can hide it, right? That's pretty cool. So um, in, in this way, we're showing that you can mix this 3D world with CSS pop-ups and, and div elements and stuff like that, and uh, hopefully this section of the patch will um, introduce that to you. And you'll see that it's triggered once. So once we press OK, it's hidden. You know, you might want to do some kind of cool minimization uh, uh, interface. We can we can get into that in, in some other stuff in, in other tutorials. But then also you see this keyboard kind of AWSD um, layout at the bottom here. And this is in the room, uh, the populated demo room patch that we're going to look at. Um, this you see isn't here. It only shows up when the device or the room is being accessed by um, a mobile device. But in the template, we just have it here. So for example, if you want to um, copy the way the demo project with all the stuff, um, the way it does it, just look for this mobile control section here. And then you'll see that a browser info operator is being used to hide or unhide these uh, mobile controls. So obviously, um, you might have users without a physical keyboard. So you need to take care and put in some kind of uh, cool navigation for touch devices. All right, let's move on. So what do we do? We can walk around. We can run with shift. We can look at this lovely geometry. And how was this made, by the way? So. What this is, is a GLTF of a cable's hull, right? And this was designed and modeled inside Blender, and it's quite light. 
Uh, and then we put it into cables and then we assigned some of the geometry to be the collision geometry, right? So if you've used cables for a number of years, you remember that there were some physics in there before, but we could never do proper um, kind of virtual space navigation. You couldn't really like remake Doom in cables. Now I think you are pretty close to being able to do that. So you cannot walk through. See, so yeah, like I can't fall off the ledge um, because there's a wall there. And uh, yeah, so I'm trying to like, um, brush up against all the walls and I'm not falling through because there is a collision now, which is fantastic, I think. Uh, and what we can do is to use this um, debug viewer in the, in the, in the bigger kind of demo of this thing. Um, and I will show you that in a bit because I, it, in the, in, we don't have it in the template, but there is another operator called ammo debug debug renderer and uh, you use that to kind of debug your wireframes and the collision objects and where they are and, and when are they colliding and things like that it's very handy um, but obviously you don't need it in, in an actual project published project you, unless you know maybe as like a pre-production stage you need to show that to your client or maybe your team that you're um having some meshes collide or something like that. But it's not in the template, but if you want to check out how it works, just um, see how it is in this demo project. All right, let's just move on to this big uh, colorful room. And what do we have here? We have some patches that are just placed inside the space and they work. So for example, this golden rotating uh, sculpture is simply a patch. So if you're used to cables, um, the way of patching and spacing things out inside the 3D world, this is like really interesting now. I'm walking around this room and I place this sculpture just how I usually place things inside cables. You know, I uh, use a transform and then put it in the correct space and now, since we have rooms that are having collision and things like that, it's um, actually like really cool to to work with the parameters and the editor, and then to to uh, correctly place all your stuff inside of your space, which is really fun to work with, actually. So, for example, if someone says, "Okay, that's really nice, but can we put something over there now?" and then you go, oh, "Okay, let me walk over there," and then let's adjust this painting thing. Um, yeah, anyway, well, maybe it's just me personally. All right, so we can put in 3D objects and um, there is a lot of a lot of new cool PBR, the physically based rendering material uh, improvements that allow you to um, definitely check this. This section is, is like also one of my favorites somewhere in the blog here, all the way in the bottom maybe, maybe here. Yeah, there, man, we got, we got height maps now and all this other stuff. Um, we'll cover that later, but um, it's, it looks really cool when you put it into space and you're uh, walking around and the reflections are acting in a cool way and like in a believable way. Um, and this wasn't possible before and now we have this parallax offset and uh, yeah, I can't wait to show you guys uh, that in detail. Okay, so here I have a little sound sculpture and then here I have a little interactive thing. Um, Let's look at the sound sculpture. So this thing right here will demonstrate how you um, are able to use ray casting to pick uh, specific shapes or 3D objects in your space. And we put it into this 3D room. So for example, when I move my mouse here, I'm not really picking anything, but when I look at this little sculpture here, my mouse is now active and I can uh, interact with all these different rectangles that produce a sound. I think it's really cool. And the, the occlusion, I guess, of these 3D geometry shapes works a lot better than it used to. And it's just amazing now that you can um, look at 
different angles and, and the geometry is being picked correctly. See, I'm like trying these kind of extreme scenarios here where I'm trying to trip this thing up and it's, and it's still working perfectly. Okay, so then we have um, another interesting thing, which is kind of, it's in two places. There's that one and then there's one here. And let's actually walk all the way over here and uh, check out this um, glowing rectangle. And what is it? Well, it's kind of a sensor that there's a, there's an invisible hitbox or like a, we call them ghost objects uh, that trigger some action when we cross over into our, our little character um, model that we're controlling uh, with this first person view walks into this ghost object, it triggers this elevator, right? So, um, and once I'm not in that area, then the elevator goes down. And it's pretty cool that you can move yourself with other physical objects. It's really also really fun to, for example, make like a platformer as you are walking around. Uh, I'm sure if you've gotten really into Unity or Unreal or maybe Godot or, or other... Mm, cool engines out there it's really funky when you're walking around and building your level at the same time so now um you can mix up your cables workflows with with like similar <laughs> things as those games engines anyway so we have the similar thing here which um will make the sidebar appear so if we walk into this area we have a sidebar and now we can interact with this little art piece. And in this um, area, we can enter different letters. And they will be extruded. So the fonts are now being able to uh, be turned into geometry and extruded. It's really cool as well. Um, We'll definitely cover that. I'm pretty excited about this thing here. So I find this font viewer um, patch inside of our main main project here, and then you can see how it's made. Um, I think it's also in the in the library by itself because uh, it was kind of a, a really spur of the moment feature that got introduced. Um, really cool uh, open open type uh, I think uh, library. Fantastic stuff. So, and then it's being manipulated, of course. Um, and then here, actually, also, if we walk closer to the statue, we got this yellow light appearing. The, the color of this sphere changes. And that's also a, a, one of these ghost object, trigger objects that um, you're able to use for oops, different um, things in your projects. Really cool. All right. So then we have these funky buttons that are, um, placed in, in some some areas of this room here. Wait, maybe we should go full screen. All right, so uh, you can create, again, see it's uh, a ray casting object here that uh, shows a little CSS uh, div um, that says randomize. And then when we click it, it randomizes this texture projection that's just being blasted all over the level. So you can you can do some cool interaction. Let's see, I can't pick it because it's behind this level, which or the behind the wall, which is really nice. Um, you can create simple buttons or or do these ghost objects where you just walk up. So for example, maybe I don't want to be able to, or I'm making like a game or something, and I don't want to be able to click it from across the screen or play these chimes from super far away. So I would mix these ghost objects to then kind of do a simple if then or you know a true uh, boolean kind of thing then okay he's kind of close enough now he's able to push this button and then uh, interact with it so um, yeah what else over here is quite interesting we have your patches on these little gallery slabs here and when you click them you open up the patch. So there's some interactivity um, for this user gallery stuff here. And you can check out how that's made um, with a cool little API call to the Cables website to get the screenshots and then actually get the links 
and open them. And uh, we can also randomize them with this button over here. Um, over here is is uh, another little doodad that doesn't really, it's just a graphical thing to show you that you can uh, just place things in space. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, yes, of course. With the right mouse button, we can, you know, I'll show you that later. Look at this. This is one of the PBR features. <laughs> it's wild, right? Like the, the, um, the camera angle will change the way this texture looks and you get this um, funky feeling that it's, it has a height and a depth. So um, it's quite an extreme example, but uh, if you're doing like bricks and stone walls, for example, you know, you want to make a really cool looking level photorealistic um, you know, textures all over the place, you definitely should try out this new parallax mapping um, uh, stuff for the texture with a height map. Um, we'll look into that in another tutorial. Um, let's press the right mouse button. Yes, you can shoot. There is um, a physics emitter. So we're emitting, we're limiting these balls. So I think there's maybe like 10 or something at this time. But um, it's actually quite CPU performative and it's not, it's, it's not so bad. Uh, and you can do some really cool simulations and, and uh, get into that. Um, definitely try it. Show us what you're making so we can improve it and, and maybe add more features. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's quite cool that you can also then use these uh, physics objects to um, create interaction or kind of little games or something like that and then test if um, a collision happened between one of these um, emitted um, objects um, with some other object. So for example, if I maybe shoot these chimes instead of using my mouse, I could, I could make sounds come out. So uh, yeah, I think we're getting into uh, some really, really crazy territory with interactive and kind of game engine uh, teasing already with this update. So anyway, that's all I wanted to show you this time around. Um, play around with this room. Tell us what you think. Um, see you in Discord. Let's chat. See you on the discussions on our GitHub page. Also post um, questions or requests for tutorials or um, you know your features or maybe you want uh, an operator that you ported over or created from from scratch um, included in the next update. Definitely do that. But uh, see you soon uh, with more of this June 2022 um, feature update overviews. Bye.